Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a video about jumping higher, another book that you have to read backwards, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing Mike Wallace. Mike is the owner of 1010 Brewing Company, so he makes beer. And parents, we are not suggesting that kids buy beer. That's right, Tiberius. Thanks for having me. No problem. Today, we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be a jump. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Roblox, but every second you get plus one jump power. So, this is a game on the Roblox platform. It was made by Enrico. Because it's on Roblox, you're able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free! Free is awesome. That's true. Also, this is made by one person, so that's a lot of different code and different things to do for one game. So, it must have took months to make this game. So, I get into the game and select play. I can already tell this is like a waiting game. So, each time you wait a second, you get plus one jump power, making you jump higher. But if you have premium, which is more money, which costs money, then you have to get plus two jump power per second. Now, you have to jump over stuff, like weird stuff. Which, now, I play this game by myself, so my dad does not know how to play this game. Also, there's like a big tower that if you jump all the way up the tower, then you get a win. So, you can sometimes then find an edge on the side of the tower to make it easier to jump up a little bit at a time. Now, now you can go and visit the place called One Win because you got a win, and there's a fun obby in that place. My dad does not enjoy obbies, and well, he's pretty bad at them because he falls away too much, and rages way too much as well. So I figured I would skip showing him this one. I'd probably fall a lot on that too. Now... Now, they have seasonal towers, and there's, like, a big tower that you need to jump all the way in one go. So, it's really hard to get there. I would say that you need at least 1,000 jump power. That's a lot of seconds. I give Roblox, but every second you get plus one jump power. 7 out of 10 stars, because it's a lot of fun to look around for cool secrets and badges around the map. And now, it's time for the book of the week. Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kuhn, book 3. This was written by the Yen Press. Let me read the back of the book. In fact, Mike, would you like to do the honors? Absolutely. Nene and Cal want to learn more about their mysterious friend, Hanaku Kun. And what better way to do that than by hunting down school mystery number five, the 4 p.m. book stacks. Well, this is an AR book. It's worth six whole points. This book is for 4th grade and 3rd month. This is an anime book about a girl in high school, and there's 7 school mysteries from her school. These are pretty awesome graphic novels. The book looks kind of odd because all the pages are upside down and backwards. Have you read this one? Yes. Uh, could you maybe help my uh, going into 4th grader with the AR test? He's not very good at them. Sure. All right, we'll talk later. <laughs> so we start with a little backstory because we're in the 3rd book. So, there was a girl in high school named Ashiro, and she loved the school mysteries. The first rumor that was spread out was Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun, which had a dead ghost inside of the ladies' bathroom. And the second being the Masaki Stairs, where if you step on the fourth stair on the stairwell, you will be teleported into a room with many scissors trying to turn you into dolls. Man, Weird. sounds interesting. Yeah. But now it's been a couple of days, and the whole school has another announcement of another school mystery. School mystery number five, the 4 p.m. book stacks. So the rumor was that if you're in the library at 4 p.m., you will see a door wide open and there are books with people's names on them. If the book is white, that means they're still alive. But if it's black, that means they're dead. But if it's red, you don't want to know what happens. What happens? I can't tell you. Oh, man. <laughs> now, they find the door and wait until it's 4 p.m. 
Now it's only 4 p.m. and they go inside of the secret room. Next, there's a lot of different books with names on them. And there's a butterfly flying around. So Yashiro followed the butterfly and it directed her to her book. And she started reading it and she saw future. Then she turned the page. Wait, I think I said a bit too much. But I want you to read the book yourself and you'll figure out what was happening right then and there. All right, I guess. That seems difficult, though, reading it backwards like that. Kind of. Well, I give Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kuhn Book 3 8 out of 10 stars because it was a great book, and I can't wait to be the fourth book in the series. And I think people who like anime should read this book series. Sounds fun. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Mike Wallace! Mike is the owner of 1010 Brewing Company, so he makes beer, and he also runs a bar. Hey, thanks Tiberius for having me on, and I gotta say, I'm a little nervous, but uh, take it easy on me, I guess. <laughs> I gotcha. So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? So far, so good. A little over my head with the uh, video games and the anime books, but... Uh, I'll pass that information on to my kids, so it sounds like stuff they'll be interested in. Sweet. Now, here's a very loaded question. Okay, so you are listed as someone that makes beer, and we do want to be sure to let the parents out there know that we are not telling kids to buy beer. That's right, parents. But, well, why do adults want beer? Um, why do adults want beer? I don't know. It's, uh... Why do kids want sugar? <laughs> it's, uh, I don't, I guess it's become a social thing with adults. So I don't know. I've heard it referenced before as bars and breweries are kind of adult playgrounds where they get to go um, hang out with their friends and have fun, just like maybe kids would do at an ice cream parlor or a playground or something. Yeah, that's true. How did you get interested in running a brewing company? Well, I've been interested in beer for a long, long time, and not that you would know, but maybe some of the parents listening might know. Central Florida has not had the local breweries uh, that they have now. Over the last 10 years, maybe, Orlando's had a big uh, surge in opening breweries here, a lot of local cool places, but that wasn't an option when I first started. There was only three or four breweries in town, and they weren't looking for help at the time, so I thought I might have to do this myself. Wow. So how did you learn to make your own beer? Uh, the honest answer I don't think I'm going to reveal here, but uh, when I was out of uh, high school, I volunteered at a local brewery and that was in town that is not here any longer. And I said, hey, I would like to learn what you do. So they let me come in and uh, clean kegs for them and start learning the process because I was getting into home brewing. So I understood basically how to make beer, but made a lot of bad beer. You could ask my dad about that one sometime. But that was a fun way for me to go get to learn my skill and hang out with people in the industry that I learned a lot from and soaked it all up and traded uh, some of my time for some knowledge. So when did you know that this was what you wanted to do for a living? Well, I think I just got to a point in uh, my career life where I felt it was either time to make the jump or give up on the dream. So years ago, I had an opportunity to go sell beer and learn that side of the business. And once I made that jump, it made me just realize that I wanted to be making beer and not selling it. So it just kind of evolved into uh, where I'm at now, running a brewery and getting to make beer. Cool. So do you make different kinds of beer and what makes them different? We make lots of different kinds of beer. And that's uh, kind of the fun of what we get to do. Um, we make all different flavors, styles. Uh, a lot of the stuff uh, shouldn't uh, probably be familiar with uh, <laughs> with kids, but we have uh, ingredients. Beer is primarily four ingredients. It's barley, uh, which is malt, which gives the beer the a lot of flavor and the color. 
We have hops, which adds a bittering characteristic and also is a preservative. Water, which is a very important ingredient. So good water makes or can make good beer as long as you do everything else right. But bad water makes bad beer for sure. And yeast, uh, which ferments our beer. And so those four ingredients is the foundation for most of our beers. But as brewers, we don't have many guidelines. So we put chocolate in our beer we put coffee in our beer no, I want to um, try that. <laughs> not yet <laughs> we've uh we've done a beer with lucky charms um we do fruit beers uh we yeah we we like to experiment and have fun nice well are there any rules about how to make beer or can you add anything you want there are rules to making beer. Uh, we have to uh, abide by the guidelines by the state and the federal government because it is uh, monitored for what we do. So as a beer maker, 50, 51% of our product has to be from barley, one of the ingredients I mentioned. But that being said, there's other ingredients other than barley we could use. So we could use barley and we could use honey, really anything sugar source that we can ferment. But for our license, it's supposed to be at least 50% barley. Cool. So I heard that kids should not drink beer because it might be dangerous for them. But why is it not dangerous for their parents? Oh, it can be dangerous for their <laughs> parents. Uh, just, just like anything, right? Moderation is what I would suggest and I think most people would say. But with anything... Uh, moderation is okay. You know, sugar, you have sodas or ice cream, little bits, probably not going to hurt you, but you can overindulge in anything, which um, many of us have seen adults who have overindulged, which is <coughs> my dad. <laughs> not always uh, <laughs> the most pleasant or they think they're the fun person in the room. And sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. But yeah, moderation. Um I mean, you can look on the internet and find anything. I know there's studies that say a beer or a glass of wine a day is really healthy for you. Some people will disagree with that. But, again, it's like anything else. We all have things that we enjoy and sometimes enjoy too much. Now, I know a lot of parents are going to be worried about the subject. But, well, you have kids. How do you talk to them about your job? Uh, good question. Um, I'm very open with my kids. Both uh, I have a 13 and an 8-year-old, and I've been in the business for almost 20 years. So both my kids have grown up in the beer business and have seen what I do. And so don't hide anything from them. They know, and they get to learn a lot about what I do as far as running a business and what goes into making a product and having to put in the time and hours that you need to do to try to be successful. But as far as the beer goes, I tell them just like I mentioned to you, it's that is it is legal for adults, but they're, you can abuse anything. So anything, and I relate it to what, like I said, what they do with sugar or video games, you know, moderation is a uh, key to kind of all those things that we enjoy okay now i know beer is illegal for kids like me but i have heard of non-alcoholic beer i know the alcohol is the bad part but is that legal for a kid to buy a drink oh uh this this is a tricky one so i'm gonna answer this to the best of my knowledge and then i'll give my opinion on this so there is a very popular growing demand for non-alcoholic beers. Um, used to be just one or two, but a lot of the smaller craft breweries like us now make their own or carry several options of non-alcoholic beers. Because again, it's the flavor and the other ingredients that we use in them that a lot of people enjoy and they don't want the added alcohol part. As far as my knowledge goes, in the state of Florida, a non-alcoholic beer is considered a soda, so it is legal for underage people to purchase and consume. My opinion, I still don't feel 100% comfortable with that, 
Uh, and I'm not suggesting that uh, I'm not buying non-alcoholic beers for my kids to drink instead of soda. I guess I'll say that, at least at this point. Now, when I'm out with my dad, I will get like a raw boil. It's kind of like the drink my dad has, but does not have how alcohol. Is it still okay to do? Uh, well, that's again just making a play on a soft drink. So I, I think for a long time that's been very popular. So that's a that's a mix of juices almost at that point. So I don't I don't know that. There's anything wrong with that? I think the reason I would say the non-alcoholic for beers f- for children is you're having that look, right? It's almost like I don't know many kids that would say, "Man, I want a beer," but you know, you have a sweet fruity drink, and it's like that's delicious. And just seeing kids walking around like they're drinking a beer, it's like, ah, don't know if that's good. Yeah. Well, do you need a lot of training to be able to run a brewing company? It's a lot of work. Making beer is uh, a lot of work, a lot of early mornings, long days. The process uh, at our brewery and uh, every brewery is different based on their equipment that they have to make the product. But a typical brew day for us, a single batch is eight to nine hours and a double batch, which we do a lot, is 12 to 13 hours. So, How much is one batch? Uh, for us, it's a little over 100 gallons, which is small. But Yeah, a lot of, a lot of breweries are a lot, lot bigger, but we like where we're at because that gives us a lot of opportunity to experiment, like was talking about earlier. Tell me, 100 Pl- gallons is small? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How small are we talking? That's, uh, well, in barrels, so we're... That's how they size breweries, uh, is in For barrels. barrels. So we're a three-barrel system, which is, is very small. Most breweries are 10 mm. to 15 barrels and a lot sense, bigger. No. So, But our size is good because we can play around, yeah. have fun. It's and if good. we mess up, it's Fine. Not, not too horrible. Not too <laughs> you horrible. never want to do that. But. Yeah. But what's the best part about making your own beer? Um, I like seeing people enjoy what we do. I think that's the most fun for me is you know, at the end of the day or when we're cleaning up and seeing people in the restaurant and Enjoy the enjoying meal. our product that we made. It's yeah, it makes you feel good. It's like, hey, we did that and uh, people are enjoying the taste. Yeah, yeah. What we were able to put together. Smart. Now, do you have to serve all the beer you make or do you sell it to stores after? Again, at our size level, most of our beer is sold in-house, but we have done some distribution, and so we had a beer at SeaWorld for Christmas. That was uh, a lot of fun and exciting uh, to be out there. Cool. So kids get to go to SeaWorld and see Dad's beer there. That's pretty fun. So, uh, And we do a little bit of that, but it's our main focus is in-house. Okay. So what's the hardest part about running a brewery? Uh, all the extra stuff. Paying the taxes, uh, dealing with uh, all the legal government stuff that, you know, when you say, hey, I'm going to go live my dream and do my hobby that I love. And it's like, wait a minute. This is a, a lot of other stuff that's not making beer or finding fees. the best ingredients <laughs> or... It's like I spend a lot of my time paying taxes and figuring out how to pay those taxes. So that's not always either easy either. Yeah. So what happens if it does not taste good? Can you fix it or do you have to throw it all away? Well, knock on wood. I hope that sounded. Um, <laughs> we've only had one batch that we've completely abandoned. Uh, years ago, we tried to do a summer beer with watermelon, and we went and bought these fresh watermelons, watermelons. juice them, to make sure they're good. we did, we Gosh. did, we juiced them, processed them, perfect, put them in the beer, and it tasted like medicine, uh, oh, so we goodness. had to, we didn't serve that batch, but, what type of medicine did it taste like? Oh, uh, like a cough syrup, like mm. that, not, not good, uh, you know, when they tell so you it's grape, and grape. it doesn't okay. really <laughs> taste like grape. It was like yeah, watermelon cough syrup that didn't taste anything like watermelon. I like so. orange dulcim. Orange flavor is the best. 
So, who can you say was the person that helped drive your passion the most? Um, I don't know. The, the, the guy I volunteered for early on in my career, I'd say he is probably the most responsible for me continuing to do this. Just he really kind of took me under his wing and uh, taught me what I thought at the time was a lot about the, the industry and showed me the ins and outs. And so I think that kind of fueled my drive. But I met a lot of people in this in- industry that has kept it fun for me and wanting to keep going. Cool. So what advice should you give to my listeners if they wanted to grow up and run their own brewing company? Uh volunteer <laughs> go go work at a brewery before you try to do it on your own and see if it's something that you really really like okay got it so what is the best advice you've ever received and who gave you that advice um i not i'm not sure the best advice was probably not to open a brewery and i didn't listen to them but that was several people that told me that <laughs> Okay. Well, what was the very first job that you ever had? First job was at Publix. Okay. Cool. Well, was there anything you learned from Publix that makes you a better beer maker? Not a better beer maker, but I learned a lot about business at Publix. I worked my way up and left as assistant meat manager. So I had to learn a lot of the business side of running a business, P&L, making sure that uh, Publix is making money so I could keep my job. I did leave on my terms, so they didn't have to kick me out. Okay. (laughs) That's good. So what message do you want to tell children all over the world about doing the work that you do? Uh, The work I do is tough, so (laughs) say uh, be careful before you make your passion into your career. Make sure it's something that you want to do you really want to do and make sure there's some fun in it because again it's all the other things that you have to do when you know if your job was to play video games but then all the other things that go with it you're like man video games might not be as much fun so you have to keep the fun side although they are fun you gotta pay for them you gotta pay for them but yeah if you're worried about all the other stuff and deadlines and other things you might not uh enjoy it as much so try to keep it fun that's what i would say okay now what is the craziest thing that's happened while you were doing your passion uh one of the kettles almost fell over on me what? so a uh, hundred gallons of hot liquid beer leaning over i was by myself had to call my uh friends at the winery around the corner help I got a <laughs> kettle toppling over and so three of us had to Goodness. Write that, and uh, nobody got hurt. Luckily. (laughs) Luckily. It's only luckily. Now, my dad said that you also run a bar that sells your beer. Now, I did bartending in VR. So, do you have to mix different drinks when you have a customer? We do not mix drinks. Uh, We're basically just pouring beers. So, sometimes they'll do concoctions of a mix of two beers, but the majority of ours is... Just pouring a beer. Sweet. Well, if you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Hmm. Stay at Publix. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess it's something. Keep keep the fun because sometimes I forget that. So that's something that I do have to remind myself from time to time that Try to keep the the fun in what you do. Keep the fun going. Keep the fun. Now, what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? Ooh, I've made lots of mistakes. Lots of mistakes. So I don't don't know. uh, Man, there's probably a few big ones, but I feel like I make a lot of mistakes, and I just try try to learn from those and just move forward and not make them again. Smart. Okay, okay. Now, can you tell me that one story? You know, remember, this is a kid's show. But that one story, well, that you're not supposed to tell me about. Okay. All right. I'm going to tell you. And again, I'm sorry, parents. 
I wasn't going to tell you how I started making beer, but I started making beer in high school because I realized we could buy the ingredients to make beer. We just couldn't buy beer. So my mom and dad were wondering why I was so into science and chemistry and all these things. And it was we were trying to figure out how to make beer, how to turn the ingredients into beer. (laughs) And so, yeah, that's one thing I probably shouldn't tell you and wouldn't suggest, but it helped me get really good grades in math and science my last year in high school. I was very into it. Cool. And I actually did my senior year science project on making beer, and I got an A. Was it an A plus? It was an A plus, 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 minus, plus. (laughs) Okay, so is there anything else you think my listeners should know about you? Um, I don't know. Uh, we didn't talk about that. Uh, we have really great food. We have very talented chef. And so their grilled cheese is amazing. We've talked about the kids not, uh, consuming the beer part, but we do serve soft drinks and root beer and water and tea and have food. So any listeners that are interested in kind of checking out what we do, but aren't old enough to enjoy the beer part. Uh, they could check out our food. Okay. Well, do you have a Facebook or website for my listeners that want to follow you? And maybe yeah. even go to the restaurant? Absolutely. So the website is 1010brewingcompany.com. And we are on Facebook and Instagram. I am socially awkward, so I don't know how to tell you to get there. But I promise you we're there. And that is T-E-N, the 10, and numbers. Ten T E N one zero. Brewery. Brewing company, yes. So what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? I don't know. You covered a lot. You, uh, <laughs> you, I, I was warned that it wasn't going to be easy, so What's I don't know. What's your favorite beer? What's my favorite beer other than what we make? Yes. Uh, my favorite beer would be Bell's Two-Hearted. Ooh. It's uh, IPA. It was one of the beers that just 20 years ago... I really enjoyed, and so it's always, when I see it available, I always a go-to. Do you know how to make it? Uh, I, it's, every brewery has their little secrets or different things that they do, but it's just a classic IPA that they make, um, hmm. and for me, it's, it's a, about it's a perfect a beer, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for Math Corners? Ooh. I'm not very good at math. Uh, well, can you? Maybe. <laughs> how how bad is this? <laughs> not that bad. All right. Let's try it. Tiberius' favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you so much, Mike, for helping me with Math Corners. This week, we're going to do some more multi-step word problems. My dad is always good at finding new problems for me to solve. Today, we're going to talk about buying video games. Oh, sounds like fun. Oh, it sure is. Well, this guy's name is Eric, and he saved $59 in March. He saved $48 in April and $39 in May. Then, Eric spent $44 on a new RGB gaming keyboard, very nice, and $20 on a new video game. How much money does Eric have left? Do you know the answer? I do not. That's a multi-step in the head. I might need uh, to cheat on that one. How long do I have to solve this? (laughs) 0.1 seconds, because I'm about to explain it. All right. (laughs) Well, first, this is a real-world problem because we do know that kids love to enjoy getting new video games. But now that I'm earning my own money, it is not as much fun to buy them. That's not the fun part, buying them. Mm Mm-hmm. So to solve this issue, you have to find out the total amount of money Erica saved. So you have $59 plus $48, and that's $107, and then plus $39, so that's $146. That's a lot of money. It goes quick. Yeah, and now you have to add together what he spent. So you have $44 plus the $20, and that makes $64 spent. So you subtract the 64 that was spent from the 146 
and that was saved, and I get two, and then an eight, so that's eighty-two dollars left. All right, there you go. Yeah. So, Mike, did you have to count out your savings when you buy your kids' video games? Uh, they they just uh, want me to buy them. So, but this would be a good lesson for them. So, show them how you have to save and get <laughs> the video games yourself. So. Nice on you for starting to save your own money for your games. No problem. Now, Mike, my teacher said that I would use math every day. Do you use math in your work? Every single day. Nice. Yeah, I... By how many batches of beer you make a day? I did, I did tell my uh, son the other day we were doing square roots. I, oh. I do not do a lot of square roots, I but uh, roots. a lot of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, Sorry. and... A lot of cross multiplication. Nice. So, lot, lot of numbers on the brewing side, and like I said, paying the bill side. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mike, for your help with math corners. No problem. I don't feel like I was much help. You did a great job of solving that. You had a lot of help involved with this. <laughs> and now it's time for the heart of a lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about obedience. For me, I think obedience is being fully committed to doing what is pleasing to God. The qualities of obedience are compliance with a good attitude and respect for the laws. You know when someone is obedient when they follow instructions willingly and thoroughly. So, I went on a field trip learning about Whitcliffe Bible translators and all the people that they help. That had a museum with all sorts of exhibits showing the different cultures learning about the Bible. During the trips, some of the kids started to play around and not pay attention. They were told to settle down, but they continued. It's made it hard for those who wanted to hear about the exhibits. This was not a good example of obedience. The teacher had to remove the entire class from the building to get things back under control. This did not make our class look good. This was not compliance with a good attitude or respect. So, Mike, did you see or use obedience at all this week? Um, I don't know. The uh, integrity, though, was standing out to me, though, because I feel like what we do is uh, we have to keep our integrity with our beer and our food and uh, treating people so... I don't know. The obedience, I don't have a good example for you, I don't think, right now. But integrity, I think, is something that we really hold high at the brewery to make sure we're doing what's what's right. And so hopefully people enjoy it and want to come back because they see that in our products and the way we treat them. Okay. Now, we should always try and be lying strong in everything we do, shouldn't we? I agree. Absolutely. And that's our show, folks. I want to thank the one, the only, the amazing Mike Wallace for being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today. I think we learned a lot about making beer and understanding that's only for adults. Maybe her parents will use this show to open up a conversation with their kids about adult beverages. Hey, Tiberius, thank you very much for having me on the show, and thank you for addressing some of these topics that aren't always as fun to bring up with uh, children. So uh, check us out uh, online, check us out in person, and hope you enjoyed listening to my story today. Thank you very much. No problem. Also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at The Tiberius Show. And please be sure to visit The Tiberius Show on YouTube and subscribe. Also, be sure to listen to us next week on The Tiberius Show. Your host, Tiberius Boy! Alright. That's a wrap and booyah.